Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've uploaded a video but I am t here today to discuss a book series I have recently restarted. So the book I'm going to talk about today is One for the Money by Janet Ivanovich. I read this series or at least part of this series back in high school. Um, I think there's like 20 plus books at this point and I read up to, I want to say about 12 or 13. Uh, so, but it's been so long since I've read them that I saw that the first one was on Kindle Unlimited. So I thought, might as well get back into it. Try to, to see how I feel with my reading taste and being a more critical reader now versus how I felt when I read the book the first time. So this is the start of the Stephanie Plum series and this series follows our main protagonist Stephanie Plum and she is down on her luck in this in this book. She loses her job and is kind of floating aimlessly in life at this point. She has no income coming in so she has been selling off her possessions and lives in basically a very, very bare, um, empty apartment with her faithful hamster companion, Rex. And enough is enough and her, she decides that she you know, needs to get a job. And her parents, or her mother in particular, tells her or heavily suggests that she gets a job working for her cousin Vinny. He works at a bail bonds company and so she decides why not and so she talks to him and he at first was like no way you're not cut out for this job. Uh, there's no way you know you have no experience being a bounty hunter. Why the hell do you think you can do this essentially and so she has some uh, dirt on him and some family secrets and basically uses that to blackmail him in order to get a job. And so instead of starting with a simple case, she decides to start with a very complicated case where if she brings in the perpetrator, she gets 10 grand. And so she's like, you know, I could do a lot with 10 grand and decides that this is what she wants to do. This is the case she wants to work. And so that's kind of where you start off. Uh, the suspect in particular that she needs to apprehend is someone she knew in high school named Joseph Morelli who took her virginity behind an E. Clara case at the restaurant cafe that she worked at and so and then just never called her basically ghosted her and she uh, in retaliation next time she saw him she ran over him with her car so they didn't have the best relationship and basically she starts trying to uncover the mystery of what happened. He's being accused of murder, um, but he is claims innocence. And, however, there is no evidence of defense, like self-defense, because the gun that he claims the other person had has disappeared. There's missing witnesses. She realizes that there might be something kind of deeper going on here and unwillingly starts kind of working with Morelli, trying to figure figure it out and prove his innocence because he promises her if she can help prove his innocence that he will then let her collect him and uh, get her ten thousand dollars. Um, so all in all this book was funny. That's really what I remember about this series is that these are really funny books and I was not wrong. Uh, the banter that Stephanie Plum has with Morelli as well as the other characters is just hilarious. She's kind of a no-nonsense uh, kind of person and I find that refreshing and I will say that my cats always oh, now my favorite character in this book is my favorite character from the series and that is her grandmother because every time her grandmother just she makes small appearances in the books but she's so funny and she always <laughs> tries to be like Stephanie whether it means wearing very tight uh, running shorts or you know trying to shoot a gun in the middle of their dinner and things like that. She's just a hilarious character and she's by far my favorite parts about these books. Uh, so all in all I found this to be you know an enjoyable reread. It had been long enough since I read it that I didn't remember exactly what had happened uh, in terms of the mystery so that was nice. Now I will say I did have some problems with this book and I think it comes from 
you know, when it was written. There's definitely slut shaming and stereotyping of characters, especially when it comes to people of color. And so in just certain phrases and things uh, relating to, you know, slut shaming, etc. That kind of irked me the wrong way because she becomes really close to a prostitute in the book and some of the way that's described or handled I didn't appreciate. Um, but overall I still found it to be enjoyable. Now there is a content warning for stalking, uh, sexual assault, and uh, really just creepy behaviors on the part of a suspect, a different suspect than Morelli in this book. And so if that kind of stuff you can't read or really makes you uncomfortable, keep that in mind going into it. The dude is just, he's a freak, he's a creeper, and he, uh, he harasses the main character for most of the book and it can be very uncomfortable at times. But overall, I did find this to be an enjoyable reread. I am happy I picked it up. And the second book, Two for the Doe, is on Kindle Unlimited as well. And I got that as well as uh, I plan to... I don't know if I'm going to buy every copy in the series or if I'm just going to buy the ones I particularly enjoy. Either way, the second one is on Kindle Unlimited, so I plan to pick it up sometime soon. Uh, but yeah, so those are my briefish thoughts on One for the Money. If you would like more in-depth reviews in the future, let me know. I'm trying to keep this kind of, I don't want to say short, but a little more concise. Um, but if you would like more in-depth, spoiler-filled reviews, just let me know. I'm feeling kind of getting back into the groove of things with this. Uh, but otherwise, I'm happy to be back. Let me know if there's any videos you guys want to see in particular, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!